Com, and I'm redoing the audio for this video because, well, the first time around it really, really sucked. So, um, either way, this video is about editing an image from the Fujifilm X Pro One, um, that is severely discolored. I shot it at a concert, and during my review, everyone was wondering about uh, how I really fixed the image and got to use the raw file versatility and color depth. So. Something that I do in Lightroom 4 is I basically use a tool um, that basically a lot of people should know about very much, but don't. Um, otherwise, I could just use my knowledge of color theory. I most often use my knowledge of color theory. But either way, let's uh, get into it. First off, you have this area right down there. and Yeah, don't even worry about tone curve, but yeah. Anyway, so I use the split toning area, and I basically set uh, the highlights and the shadows to basically what I would want them to be. So maybe I want her skin to be like maybe an orangish or bluish, and I tweak that accordingly. So I just move that over to whatever I'm going to want it to be first, and then you see a little bit of changes, but not enough yet. You'll see more in a bit. Just hold on. Then I set the shadows to whatever I want it to be as well. I raise the saturation levels, and then I mess with the balance a bit. And you see how the image changes. See that? And now if you keep moving around, you'll see, well, one, a really trippy show, but otherwise, not really. Then I can go up, and I can mess with the white balance, and I can mess with the tint more. That's too much. Until I can get what I want, and it's getting closer to what I want, but it's not really there yet. That's really close, actually. So then after that, I just scroll back down, mess with the colors a little bit more, and now it's starting to look a little bit like chrome film, which is really cool. And you just mess with the colors even more until you get a really, really desired look. Well. Desired look is once again very subjective. It's really what you want. So just keep messing with that. And once again, anyone can do this in Lightroom 4. It's built in, it's very simple to do. Then after a while, you're going to want to actually mess with the colors more as well, too. Um, her skin, I believe, is magenta. You can see that right there. Yeah. And as you see, it's basically recovering her skin. And then I just do some other tweaks that I personally want just for my own looks. Clarity, I always mess with black levels. That way I can get a little bit more detail in the shadows. Or I could have just edited the shadows as I as it was, because there is a slider there for it. Then I can keep messing with the colors to see more. Uh, don't even worry about tone curve again. I never use that. But yeah, and then I can just tweak the colors even more. But in addition to that too, um, when you're messing with colors this much, you really should remember that you're also introducing a lot of color noise. So if you want to get rid of that, you have to go down to the noise reduction area and you have to raise the noise reduction. And then you have, there's a slider for color and it will get rid of any real major color noise that you may see there. And it's mostly gotten rid of. Um, I want to tweak it a little bit more. But yeah. So that's one image, at least. Um, there are others I can go through. Let me just pick one that I like. All right, well, uh, do I want any of these? No, I edited the other ones earlier. No, no, no. All right, fine, I'll edit this one. This one's a little tougher. Um, red can be very tough, however. I was able to get it in uh, the other blog post in my Fujifilm X Pro 1 review. Um, either way, you just have to figure out what colors you want for the highlights and what shadow color you want as well to dominate. So just go in and you mess with the sliders again. Really pretty simple. Another thing that you could have done is you can actually use the uh, white balance uh, brush, which Lightroom 4 has, and works really, really well. Um, once again, though, that depends on the color depth of the image and other factors as well, too. 
But it's something that a lot of people forget about. However, it's really, really useful. And as you see, I'm just moving the sliders, messing with the colors, seeing the effects I get. Funny enough, this was a psychedelic band, so um, it's pretty trippy in terms of color patterns. And once again, just keep sliding it around, seeing what I'd want. Sometimes I don't even always know what I want. I don't always have a vision in mind. So I just play with the colors, see what I can get. And also keep in mind the saturation and vibrance. Well, vibrance controls the more subtle t colors, while saturation controls the more dominant colors in an image. So you should always keep that in mind. And then messing with the green levels. Green's supposed to be the highlights right now. And yeah, just keep messing with it. Keep messing with it. And sometimes I get an image that I want, sometimes I don't. I just really have to sit there and mess with it. I mean, there is a way to neutralize your white balance. That's um, by using 18% gray or finding a fully gray pixel. It's 50% R, 50% G, 50% B. Um, but you really can't always find that pixel. And you can do that using the uh, white balance dropper tool, but yeah, in this case you really can't. It's too tough. That'll neutralize the color, but yes. And that's really about it right there. I mean, there's really not much else to the editing, so that's it. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.